All right, so recording in progress. I'll pull up my PowerPoint. Um, I'll get a uh, big screen. All right, so uh, just a, a few uh, miscellaneous things um, in the prologue. Uh, Carol mentioned is when we were talking about uh, uh, Putin and the uh, uh, interference in Syria, uh, the, the motivation about uh, Russia selling uh, arms. So, so I, I hadn't mentioned that as one of the. Uh, I focus more on the uh, geopolitical, the um, uh, protecting uh, uh, the Mediterranean side of the Bosphorus, um, so that they can keep their warm water port always going. But I think the uh, uh, the, the arms sale they're 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 selling a lot of weapons around the world and. That may be one reason some uh, countries are, are are not condemning it. Uh, uh, you know, I think you've got about 40. Um, and uh, then uh, Dan sent me a, a, a report from the Times. Uh, we've been following the some FSB agents and, and uh, uh, people in the military that we are think uh, think we think likely uh, to uh, bolt at this. One of them is the uh, defense uh, chief um, uh, Shiogu. Uh, his mother is is uh, Ukrainian, and he's not part of uh, the FSB uh, establishment. So we've got his eye on him. He, he disappeared for a few weeks. So we uh, we were wondering about that, but. There, there, there's been 150 FSB agents uh, purged, so there's, it, it's going to be interesting uh, to watch. Um, and then um, uh, Dan also sent me uh, this. Uh, the, uh, the folks in red were the ones who refused to uh, uh, vote to remove uh, Russia from the Human Rights Council. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, China, but there's some uh, uh, Belarus, just like you'd, you'd expect. I don't know what Algeria's deal is or Bolivia, um, but a lot of uh, African countries um, uh, who are getting aid, Mali's getting uh, the Wagner group in, geez. Um, uh, th those are Russian uh, mercenaries with close uh, ties uh, to Putin. Of course, uh, Iran and and then the former stands that used to have be Soviet uh, states. Uh, Kazakhstan had a revolt of their own, and and they relied on uh, Putin to rescue the the elite uh, from popular disgust. Um, La uh, Laos, that's interesting. Uh, uh, Nicaragua, uh, the, the, they've gone full bore. Uh, 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 autocrat, um, uh, of course, Syria and Tajikistan, Uzbekistan. Vietnam is interesting. I'll keep an eye on that. And uh, uh, finally, Zimbabwe. Um, so uh, there was a report in a Financial Times, Ed Luce is an interesting commentator. And he pointed out, hey, don't get so cocky, world. If, if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, the Western world, uh, developed world. If you look at the world opinion by population, the majority of world population would support Russia. Oh, but I don't know about that. The, the, are we really going to count all the, the people in China and in India that are um, uh, uh, really uh, uh, dominated by, by one party uh, rule at this point? Um, uh, and, and I thought, well, gee, uh, OK, fine. Uh, but but let's look at productivity. Um, uh, let's look at the world's uh, uh, gross national uh, product. And uh, you're going to you're going to stare at this and you're going to have a hard time finding Russia. Uh, what's their contribution to uh, 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 world pro uh, productivity. Here it is, right up here at 11.30 uh, on the clock. They only contribute 0.8%, not even 1%. Of course, China has 17%. India, 
has has three. They're they're punching be way below their weight. Japan's punching above its weight. And so if 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 you looked at uh, weighted the the approval of uh, Putin by um, uh, productivity, you get a very different uh, picture. Yeah, uh, you 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 get more more like. Uh, uh, Seventy percent of the of the world's uh, uh, productive nations uh, being against what what he's doing, and most of them are are democracies. And as we've pointed out many times, uh, one democracy has really never attacked another. I, yeah, we we have this discussion periodically, and a few uh, exceptions come up. Um, uh, but uh, uh, I think that that uh, that's interesting. Um, so um, uh, by my reckoning, the the autocrats in total uh, uh, only have 26 uh, uh, percent of uh, the world uh, GMP. Uh, so um, and, and again, with population, I don't think uh, the, 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 that that counts uh, for much. It's not uh, reflective of considered um, opinion. By the way, it's just interesting that Australia and South Korea um, uh, together uh, are four percent of the world GMP. India is less at three point five. Uh, that that kind of struck me. So uh, you know, the first draft of history um, is a book, right? And there's a, a new book out that uh, was just in, uh, uh, reviewed in in the Economist. It's called The Age of the Strongman, and it, it just solidifies what some of us have have been sensing. Uh, that there's a drift towards uh, autocracy, and we've seen it in our own country, of course. Um, uh, but uh, the, the name of the book is uh, The Age of the Strong Man, um, and uh, uh, it, 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 it's an interesting commentary. I think we will look back on this time as uh, the last uh, 20 years as being uh, a, a, a discrete period of history. We can't see it now. Uh, the, 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 the belief is that history doesn't so solidify for uh, 20 years. It really takes 20 years to to mature and go from becoming journalism and 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 uh, uh, book uh, uh, writing in, into genuine history. But we'll see. We're definitely uh, all these guys are living in different times, and um, all these guys are in trouble. By the way, uh, she is in big trouble with uh, Omicron. The, uh, and uh, and there have been a number of articles. Uh, uh, analyzing whether they've stuck with uh, Omicron more for uh, uh, public relations than sound uh, medical advice. And now they're at a, a, a situation where uh, it's going to hit all at once and they are not prepared, as we can see in, in Shanghai. Uh, Trump's way down painted himself into the corner with his relationship with uh, uh, Putin and, and and Putin's in deep doo doo as uh, so. Um, it, 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 what's made us switch from the Silk Road to um, uh, the Ukraine is this, that this is a moment of uh, clarification. Uh, if we're in the age of strong men, the strong men are really be, being tested now. One by their own hubris uh, with P uh, Putin. Um, and, and the other with the, the, the defense, deficiencies of autocratic rule in, in managing something like, like Omicron um, and uh, the uh, uh, value of the, the Chinese stock market has uh, gone down by a, a couple of trillion dollars because of uh, Xi's program for shared co-prosperity where he's reigning in. Um, uh, the uh, individual entrepreneurs and and uh, uh, turning uh, uh, the, uh, social media and and the new technologies over to local party bosses distributed um, uh, around China as part of his uh, economic program. Well, we'll see how that works. Already, there's indications that the Chinese economy is suffering, independent of of, of Omicron. Um, 
And, um, uh, you know, yeah, we're in the age of the strongman, but the Pew had an, an interesting uh, update, uh, the public support for democratic ideals just in 2019. OK, things have changed in the last three years, but they can't have changed that much. And uh, uh, by their reckoning, 57 percent of the uh, uh, countries in the world were democracies, democracies of, of some, some kind. Only 13 percent in 2019 were really uh, autocracies. So um, uh, maybe we're not in, in as much of a, a decline as, as, as we feel. Uh, and and the down from the peak is only down really one percent in the last few years. So this is a map of uh, uh, from uh, uh, Pew, God bless them, uh, and they uh, uh, put the democratic world in in blue and the autocratic world in orange, and the other people are mixed. Well, here we here we are in 2017, and you can see it's it, it's quite. Uh, uh, dramatic. Uh, so um, we should maintain our, our perspective uh, and give uh, history a chance to be written down without saying we're necessarily in the age of the strong man. Um, all right. So when we stop with uh, that's the end of my prologue. Um, and, uh, any comments or other any other additions? Um. I, I'd be curious about Ethiopia. Why is Ethiopia listed with the? Uh... Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. So um, the, the 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 problem uh, in, in Ethiopia now uh, is, of course, they're they're having a civil war. Um, and uh, with the 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 tree, uh, Tigray. Uh, uh, rebellion. Uh, so um, there's been some uh, black backsliding with uh, uh, Abe. Um, I mean, he got the Nobel Prize uh, for coming in and cleaning uh, things up. They've still got a big dispute with the, the Suez on uh, uh, damming uh, uh, the White Nile. Um, but um, somebody coming in uh so um uh, uh I, I guess that that that's the uh, reason uh that that they're still in play uh, a question mark um okay so um uh, we we summarize putin's life by looking at his uh, uh biography uh, uh, there was a section on NATO that, that uh, I found that I feel like I should correct and put in. Um, uh, but uh, in 2003, here, uh, where we're up to, uh, Putin's uh, 51, um, uh, Russia has recovered from the decade of, of chaos um, under, uh, uh, partially under his uh, leadership. And I think my point is uh, the cards have been been dealt, that all the major influences in Putin's life are in play by by 2003. Um, and if it takes 20 years for history to be written, this this would be a logical place for us to think about uh, uh, stopping in terms of, of, of history. Um, sure, we can have a, a, a conversation on, on uh, journalism and what's happening uh, uh, since then, and we will, I'm sure, because there's so much happening. Um, but uh, my major sources uh, so far have been his autobiography, uh, written in 2000, recommended by Susan Glazer. When she recommended it, I said, OK, I'll give it a try. And it was a, a, a very uh, re revealing. Um, he's uh, 58 and he's just taken over major power and we followed how he went up. And I'm going to review it very quickly. Uh, uh, other um, uh, uh, re uh, sources that we've leaned heavily on, Fiona Hill, of course, but uh, Timothy Snyder that Carol recommended, and he he is uh, uh, really a specialist in, in in the Ukraine. His his uh, 
uh, blood glands is, is uh, uh, based on the suffering of the Ukraine through, throughout history. And that world, uh, you're making arguments, we're hearing arguments that the world wars w- were just as much about Ukraine as uh, anything. Masha Gestin, who is a dissident who uh, lived in Russia to quite uh, recently. Today, we're going to, I hope, get to Putin's Munich speech, which I think... Uh, uh, reveals precisely what he has decided by the year 2003, 2004. And of course, he wrote his position and his thinking on Russian uh, history, a 7,000 word essay last uh, uh, July that all these people um, uh, refer to and that I've gone through and extracted uh, his uh, different take at different points of of. Uh, uh, Russian history. And as a major uh, resource, I, I mentioned this study group uh, uh, because you all have uh, uh, tuned me into different things. So um, I want to start and review uh, 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 then Putin's biography with just the essence, what the major influences that I think uh, have set in him that are the playing cards that have been dealt by the year 2003. Of course, he's never gonna forget the family lore about his uh, 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 mother. 10 years before Putin was born, his mother almost died in the siege of of Leningrad. Um, And so 800 is the number to remember when it comes to uh, Leningrad. 800,000 civilians. 872 days of blockade, people dying and starving uh, in the in the streets, um, uh, destructive, costly, uh, maybe genocide, and uh, a Putin uh, family was very much uh, affected. Uh, and and in the book, Putin talks about. Uh, his mother's experience. She was on the verge of uh, survival. Uh, She had fainted and had been pronounced dead and laid in with other corpses. Uh, uh, She woke up moaning and she lived um, and uh, uh, went on and actually got pregnant. Um, uh, Putin's only child, but he was supposed to have two older brothers. Um, uh, the first one that died a few months after birth during the, uh, the siege uh, for uh, malnutrition and stress. Uh, a second brother was OK at birth and, and put in a children's home uh, uh, as they were tr- focusing on cha- saving the kids. Um, but, but that it was a setup for um, a communicable disease. He, he died of diphtheria. Uh, and so uh, uh, a neighbor says, imagine how courageous Putin's mother must have been to uh, uh, give birth to him at the age of 41. Um, and he became an on- only child uh, uh, born in uh, 1952. Um, uh, he uh, did not have a good start. He was a, 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 a bad student. He was always late. And he was rejected in their version of the Boy Scouts and the communist reversion of, uh, version of the Boy Scouts because he was so unruly. So he talks about his courtyard skills. What does that mean? He, he was a gangster on the playground. That's what that means. Um, and uh, he realized at some point that just uh, relying on his bulliness um, wasn't going to be enough. Uh, that he he applied it to uh, sports, um, and by the uh, the sixth grade he was worried about his status, and he that if his, his status was uh, going to improve, he had to start doing well in school. So he he started applying uh, himself uh, at the time of, of of the sixth grade, a late bloomer. Uh, and his love of spart- sports, uh, uh, particularly focused on the martial sports. Okay, so the, uh, that that uh, is consistent with 
um, his his uh, courtyard uh, bulliness, right? Uh, but he's good enough to become the the champ uh, the uh, uh, judo champion of uh, Saint Petersburg in 1975, and he says it's not just a, a sport; it's a philosophy. It does involve a lot of gamemanship and and strategic thinking. But what what really inspired him as a boy was the KGB. Um, uh, they were the subject of uh, many novels and spy movies. Um, and he, uh, uh, an observer has uh, quoted him as being just uh, single-minded. He wanted to join the KGB, just like uh, 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 I wanted to be a cowboy when I grew up. Um, and so uh, uh, he read uh, everything he could get his hands uh, on. And at the age of 16, he presented himself to the KGB, just walked in. And he was told, hey, uh, you got to go to law school before you can join. And you should keep your mouth shut. They maybe noticed that he, he was uh, um, assertive. Um, and so there was something interesting that happened when he was 16 that might have pushed him over to the KGB office. It was a big hit movie called uh, The Shield and uh, the Sword. Um, and uh, uh, you see that they reversed the wording here. The KGB did um, uh, to write the sword and the shield. Um, and so th this became a, a, a thing. Um, and in his uh, biography, he puts in three of the pictures that he had of himself in early years in the KGB. Uh, um, so obviously that that's important to him. And the um, uh, when young KGB uh, uh, agents mature and they, they, it becomes a career, they become a silovik. Um, and this is a, poli uh, a politician that has a background in the military or, or security uh, from uh, any, any of these uh, vegetable soup uh, type of uh, agencies. Uh, uh, KGB has become the FSB um, in uh, the Russian uh, Federation. Uh, uh, but altogether, cumulatively, they comprise the, the, the Silovik. And the, it's a good old boys network. And this is Putin when he's still uh, in uh, St. Petersburg. The new name for uh, Len Leningrad um, uh, is St. Petersburg after the uh, 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 fall of communism. It goes back to uh, uh, the czar who founded it, built it from out of a swamp. Uh, so, uh, and it's often called in books Pete. Uh, uh, Putin often says, "Well, back in Pete, uh, P E T E." Um, and Ike and I had the uh, uh, fortune to to visit there, and and we we knew some people there, and uh, uh, Russians, and uh, 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 we got a feel for for Pete, um, but. Um, uh, at this point, I just want to mention uh, uh, something that, that was forwarded uh, by Dan, um, uh, uh, pointing out the continuity um, uh, in the style of government uh, for 400 years, that there wasn't that much of a difference between the, the way uh, the czars organized Russia, the way the communists uh, organized the Soviet Union, and the way Putin is... Uh, uh, organizing the post-Soviet uh, uh, era. So that sent me back to, to review and, and highlight some of the things we talked about before. So a quick, a quick review. Uh, it really starts with uh, Ivan IV, the terrible. Um, uh, uh, when he was young, uh, one of his uh, uh, play, playmates uh, was murdered by a, bo a boyar. So he's in, in the... Uh, the power structure. He's in the the elite. His his father is czar. Uh, but what's a boyar? You'll remember they're just uh, uh, Vikings. 
They're, they're former Vikings, hundreds of years, but in the Viking tradition, and they've become the aristocrats. They were the aristocrats in Kiev. They were the aristocrats in Novgorod, uh, the successor to Kiev. And uh, they were the aristocrats in uh, uh, Moscovy, uh, 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 Moscow. And he, he was neglected as a kid. He, he talked uh, about even being tortured. I don't know any detail on that. And once he saw how powerful he could, he could be, uh, he, he vowed he was, he was going to take revenge on the boyars. Um, one restraining factor was, was his wife, uh, uh, Anastasia. She died uh, maybe from poison. Uh, back in those days, mercury was one of the favorite uh, way of poisoning. Um, and um, uh, uh, it, lay, it, it, it led him to uh, retaliate. Um, and so uh, he goes on uh, a witch hunt trying to find uh, who might have poisoned his wife. And one of the consequences of that is he dis establishes the secret police. Um, the first time we can think of it as, as an, an, an institution. It's had many names, and I'm not going to uh, bore you with that. This was its, its first name. I'm not even going to uh, pronounce it. Um, uh, but uh, he uh, 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 got his grip on, on the boyers and terrorized them. Here's one being, being bought up, brought in to hear um, his sentence. Um, and they uh, had a insignia of terror, which was uh, a dog's head and a broom. Um, oh my goodness! This was part of the uh, the insignia was part of the the uniform, um, uh, and uh, uh, apparently uh, some of the secret police uh, would uh, carry around a dog's head uh, and a broom uh, as they went in into a uh, village. It's just to terrorize. And this this is the uh, the insignia, uh, uh, the dog's head and and the broom. Uh, to find uh, who's uh, uh, treacherous and to sweep them away. Um, and so uh, they wore black and they had black horses. They dressed in black like monks uh, and, and they had carte blanche uh, uh, kill whoever they thought um, uh, were, were disloyal. Uh, and, and so that kind of set a precedent. Um, Ivan the Terrible went on and, and, and did something that made him a hero. He, he conquered Kazan, which is very interesting to uh, Iko and me, because when we were uh, traveling in an all places Lithuania, we were, we were having a hard time uh, communicating with the, the bus driver from the airport. Uh, and this guy who was all a Russian from a, on vacation, uh, intervened and spoke Russian with the Lithuanian uh, uh, driver, and he was from Kazan. Um, and, and, and so we had a couple of meals uh, uh, with him. Uh, so where is Kazan? Uh, it was a Khanate um, uh, located here, just to orient you. This is the Caspian. Uh, this is the northern part of um, the, the Black uh, Sea. Uh, here's a, a, a Crimea Khanate uh, uh, down there. And uh, uh, they uh, were not accepting uh, overlordship from Moscow. Um, and so he, he went down and uh, led uh, 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 the battle, uh, Ivan the Terrible. Um, and um, it explained something that we saw uh, a couple of times, um, a, uh, a Madonna in churches called Our Lady of Kazan. And the biggest um, uh, tribute to her is in, in St. Uh, Petersburg. This whole uh, cathedral is dedicated to Our Lady uh, of Kazan. Uh, and Ivan is said to be religious. Huh. 
That's interesting. Combining uh, uh, military violence uh, uh, with re with religion um, uh, that may have uh, uh, an echo uh, when we start talking about later times. Uh, and this is inside uh, uh, the cathedral, and here is the uh, icon uh, herself, uh, Our Lady of uh, Kazan. And when we were there, there were long lines. They don't have uh, individual services. Uh, they, they have, uh, 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 it's walk-in uh, all the time. And uh, there's always a line uh, to go up and uh, uh, Kiss your your fingers and and press them uh, on the uh, image of uh, 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 Our Lady of, of Kazan. Um, uh, uh, a, a, a bad thing to do in a pandemic. Um, the, the, Peter the Great continues this uh, tradition. We watched a Russian miniseries on uh, uh, the biography of, of Peter the Great, the dramatization. Oh my goodness, uh, so different um, it, it, than what was going on in the West in the 1720s. In one scene, he has a boyer hogtied hanging from the ceiling and goes in and carries on a conversation with him about uh, what the uh, boyar is going to do to restrain himself from a corruption when he lets him go. Um, so he participated, um, uh, and this was depicted in, in uh, the uh, dramatization of his life. Also in that, uh, he had a mistress uh, who, because of court intrigue, um, was, was probably poisoned, uh, and and that was depicted. Her uh, her her uh, tea systematically uh, uh, being tampered with, and that may have been uh, mercury. Come come to think about it, so um, uh, very different. The West has gone through the Renaissance and the Enlightenment. Sure, we had bad thirty years wars and terrible things as well. Uh, but uh, just just always bear this in mind that Russia didn't go through uh, the, the Renaissance, didn't go through anything uh, uh, like the Enlightenment or the, the glorious revolution in, in Britain, which uh, uh, really neutered uh, the monarchy. Um, so uh, uh, Western travelers as early as 1775 uh, we're talking about entering an empire of fear, and that's different than traveling around uh, Europe and, and uh, uh, or the United States. Um, and then uh, move on to the 19th uh, century. Tsar Nicholas the uh, uh, first um, he he uh, uh, updated the the secret police. Uh, Alexander the uh, second was assassinated. Uh, in a church in, in Pete, it was uh, right out on the sidewalk, but now that spot, because the church has been enlarged, is inside uh, of the main uh, church, one of the main churches in Pete, uh, and Iko and I had a, a, a chance to visit that spot, and there's a, a whole history there uh, on that uh, spot. So Alexander II is, is assassinated, and Alexander III uh, 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 really strengthens uh, the secret police, gives it extraordinary powers. It places it closer to the heart of a government uh, institution. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, without a democracy, little oversight. Um, and then you get to the communist era, and they were they were notorious for their secret police. This is the. Uh, the uh, legendary founder um, of the KGB, uh, the new name for the secret police. Uh, and, uh, and until 1990, there was a, 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 a square and a jail and a, and a statue uh, to this guy uh, be, because um, of the 
uh, a valuation of order um, and the, the prevention of, of uh, uh, chaos and that you need a strong police, even to the point of a police state, which is certainly what Stalin's uh, Russia was. Uh, but this was the, the guy that car carried it out. Um, all right. So uh, uh, that's the history of uh, 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 intrusive policing in Russia, if you, you will. Um, and the, the West has always uh, uh, criticized that. Uh, but, but what's the effect of the West criticizing uh, a, a Russian uh, uh, policy. Uh, they, they usually uh, just react by, by uh, doubling down and, and censoring whatever the West is, is trying to say uh, and censoring uh, people that are trying to make change. And we'll get to the, some of those uh, 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 people uh, later on, and of course, some in the, if we uh, get around to talking about contemporary problems in Russia, that's certainly uh, relevant. Um, so back to, to, to Putin, he uh, enters the KGB with a strong history of uh, a uh, police state, really. Um, uh, but his first assignment at the age of 33 is to go to East Germany, specifically Dresden. Um, and he is gonna experience defeat and a defeat in the Russian uh, tradition of, of security. Um, uh, so here he is in, in uh, uh, Dresden. Um, and uh, you gotta remember at the time he landed in East Germany, uh, the expansion of the Soviet sphere of influence was beyond anything any czar could have dreamt of. And that was because of Hitler's overreach and, and uh, reaction uh, to that. Um, Yugoslavia is uh, a different shade because they were uh, very independent minded from the very beginning, as we remember in Albania, who eventually uh, uh, went so extreme that they associated themselves more with China, Mao. <laughs> uh, we had the opportunity to visit Al Albania a few years ago with Ramsey. Uh, uh, Janet and Ramsey found a guide for us in, in uh, what a unique uh, country uh, that is with a unique history. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, Putin riding the crest of uh, a wave uh, th that's going to crash in 1989. Uh, 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 and and uh, the uh, uh, politicians in East Berlin were in the true Russian tradition, Stalinist tradition. This guy, Ulbricht, he, he, he was in uh, uh, charge when I lived in, in uh, Berlin in uh, uh, 1961 and 62. Um, and uh, the, the, he was uh, the worst of the worst. And East Germany, as far away was it from Moscow, was probably the, nevertheless the most Stalinist because of Walter uh, Ulbricht. So Putin's there and uh, he, he's kind of uh, 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 Ulbricht's henchman and Stasi's right-hand man. So he's learning uh, the ways of, of the Stalinists as uh, employed by the uh, East Germans. Um, uh, and then uh, he comes back, and uh, I, I, I won't give this, this whole history that we went over in detail uh, last time, uh, but just to review the high points of his meeting with Kissinger back in Pete, he uh, uh, goes back there and is given an opportunity to participate in the economic renewal of uh, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, and he establishes uh, contacts with um, 
uh, American corporations, the first one is Coca-Cola, who goes in, builds a bottling plant, but also <laughs> builds a lot of infrastructure in St. Petersburg just to gain favor and improve uh, uh, their chance in their battle against Pepsi. Uh, and Kissinger says to him something uh, that he never will forget. It's in his book because this conversation happened in like around 1992. All decent people got their start in intelligence. <laughs> I did too. Uh, and then Kissinger went on and said uh, something that Putin said was unexpected. He, he, uh, Kissinger said, he did not think the Soviet Union should have abandoned Eastern Europe so quickly, that the, the change of balance went too rapidly. And uh, uh, Kissinger, uh, uh, he was always a, a balance of power. Uh, his hero was Metternich uh, uh, from Austria, who uh, recreated a, a balance of power in Europe after the fall of, of Napoleon. Uh, and uh, he, he thought Gorbachev made a big mistake. And, and of course, Putin agrees with him. And he said it a number of times that he thinks the biggest tragedy of the 20th century was the fall of the Soviet Union, the rapid fall of the Soviet Union. So um, uh, monitoring him, how much is Putin uh, influenced by, by the history, by, by the czars? And Fiona Hill points out um, uh, that there's four statues in that room where he uh, sees people at the end of a long desk. You look uh, around and there's four sta statues. Uh, one is uh, uh, Catherine uh, uh, the Great, and she's the one that first uh, got uh, wrestled uh, uh, the Crimea uh, away from the Tatars. Um, and uh, so here she is, one of the four uh, statues. Here he is, had, is far removed uh, uh, from uh, reporters and uh, visiting dignitaries. Um, but it, uh, right after he sees uh, 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 Kissinger, he, he becomes uh, uh, the deputy to a, a a, a, a thriving politician named uh, Sobchak, who, who emerges from, from the ashes and is a, a true Democrat. And he and Putin have a deep relationship, uh, a genuine relationship. Um, and Sobchak uh, 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 was a, 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 a more of a, a Democrat, uh, certainly, uh, uh, than uh, um, uh, uh, Gorbachev even. Um, and so uh, he, he becomes his campaign manager and, and he wants to go from city council chair to the first mayor of St. Petersburg. It's a newly created uh, elected position, but they fail. And, you know, it just gives rise every step of the way. What if they had succeeded? <laughs> what, would that have put uh, Putin on a different uh, path? Then there's, uh, there's two huge uh, uh, personal tragedies uh, in his life. His wife almost dies of a fractured neck in an automobile uh, accident. Uh, and later on, he says that made him start thinking about religion, but he doesn't say anything about religion in the book that's written in 2000. And then a, fire, a, a life threatening fire burned down their dock while they were in it. Um, uh, it was a badly installed uh, sauna. Uh, and so uh, uh, those. Uh, uh, events uh, uh, unmoor him uh, along with the um, failure in democratic uh, uh, politics. By the way, uh, automobile accidents, uh, uh, his driver gets killed. And it, uh, I thought, huh, what's going on? Why? Uh, so I went back and looked at uh, and, and searched for uh, uh, automobile accidents in the uh, communist uh, uh, era, and it, it was dreadful. Uh, and these were the factors uh, involved, which you would uh, uh, most of which you would expect. Um, 
in a uh, uh, developing economy, they, they can't afford to make cars with seat belts. Uh, but there was a human factor, and that's alcohol. Always a problem. Always has been a problem. Um, uh, and so his driver uh, uh, dies. Uh, uh, this is the actual uh, uh, cra crash site. This is also in the, in the 90s. So he, he, he's shaken. Um, a political defeat, personal tragedy. Um, his wife very easily uh, uh, could have died. She laid around with a fractured neck for a number of days, and they didn't know it. Um, the, uh, but by a stroke of fortune, he also had been the local campaign manager for Boris Yeltsin. What if he hadn't been Boris Yeltsin's campaign manager? Um, uh, but he hitched his wagon to, to the right star uh, and became um, uh, Yeltsin's protege. Um, and so he, uh, at that point, uh, with uh, Yeltsin's encouragement, got back into uh, uh, government, got back into the uh, security uh, business um, uh, as a non-elected uh, bureaucrat. And then we followed his uh, incredible rise, um, getting a promotion every year, no, no doubt with Yeltsin overseeing it. And, and uh, uh, a year later, he's the director of the FSB. Um, and at this time, Chechnya is becoming a big, big problem. Um, uh, uh, then he goes on and he's prime minister in the 99 and then uh, uh, acting president a few months uh, later, all the while uh, Chechnya is boiling. Um, and uh, this is uh, 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 an echo really of Ivan the Terrible's experience in, in Kazan. Um, uh, uh, he doesn't say so uh, explicitly, um, but uh, 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 here's where Chechnya is, um, as far south as you, you can go, not that far from Georgia, which will become a problem uh, in, in 2004 at the very same time that uh, the Ukraine uh, be, uh, becomes a problem uh, for him. Um, and uh, the Slovaki have failed in the 90s. They have not been able to deal with uh, uh, Chechnya. And he has experienced it at every level uh, uh, of government. So uh, he, he comes in, he's acting uh, president at midnight uh, of the year as the uh, new year 2000s uh, uh, coming in. This is when he uh, writes his, uh, uh, by, by, by that time, his uh, autobiography is almost done. And uh, Putin uh, uh, puts down the fist um, and uh, destroys Grozny uh, uh, to save it. Um, and uh, where is Chechnya now? Uh, it, it's run by a warlord. His, uh, this guy's father uh, was a warlord and uh, a, a Putin... Uh, uh, allied himself with his this guy's father, and now the son is is a warlord who is uh, uh, continued uh, the crackdown, um, and uh, also interestingly uh, has a cult of uh, personality, which uh, we're going to see uh, form around uh, Putin himself, and is going to be one of the cards in his hand uh, when he gets to 2004 and the first challenge uh, from, from uh, the, uh, the Ukraine. So, but something else happened in 1999, just as Putin was ascending to power. Um, we, uh, under NATO, unilaterally intervened in Kosovo against the Serbs, the, his fellow Slavs, the, the, Ser the Serbs, uh, in Putin's eyes. Um, we'd intervened in Bosnia, but that had been blessed by, by uh, the uh, uh, international community. But not 1999, not in Kosovo, 
Clinton did that unilaterally with NATO. So NATO is uh, um, a uh, is on uh, uh, Putin's mind from the very get go as he's uh, uh, ascended uh, to power. And uh, uh, from our point of view, uh, it, it, it was something we, we had to do. Uh, Clinton always regretted not getting involved in Rwanda, and he didn't want to have the blood of Kosovo uh, on his hands. So he intervened without the UN. Um, uh, and uh, uh, in Putin's view, uh, this uh, was I I illegal without the UN Security Council's sanction. Of course, Russia uh, s still has a, um, a veto uh, in the Security Council. Um, but here, uh, in Putin's view, NATO's using uh, uh, missiles in the heart of uh, Europe, and he saw this as a shocking ass assault on Slavs and an implied threat to dismember Russia as well. So if Putin's paranoid, uh, I, uh, we can't excuse it, uh, 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 but we could try to figure out where it might be uh, coming from. Um, uh, so to describe it is not to excuse it. Um, and uh, so there's a whole section of NATO from his autobiography in 2000. I didn't go through this our first time through. I'm gonna go through it real quick and then we'll wind up. Um, and uh, uh, at that point, you'll be surprised that there, there was the possibility of uh, Russia joining uh, uh, NATO. Uh, and it didn't happen uh, because Putin thought that they were being disrespected and that they weren't going to be full-fledged uh, uh, members. But if they had been, it wouldn't be so terrible. Uh, in 1991, uh, uh, right after the fall of communism, it didn't uh, take long uh, for Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Poland uh, uh, to join NATO. Uh, uh, with uh, within a year, uh, that that was that was pretty quick, and that's only the first of four times that NATO has uh, 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 expanded, getting closer and closer to uh, uh, Russia's um, uh, borders. Uh, and here's uh, uh, Clinton; he was in charge of uh, 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 Czechoslovakia coming in. Uh, and Madden Albright was uh, uh, born in Czechoslovakia. Uh, uh, she was uh, Jewish, but didn't know it until late in life, you'll, you'll remember. Um, so uh, he talks specifically uh, about uh, Kosovo. It was supposed to remain within U Yugoslavia, some kind of partnership with, with, with Serbia. Um, uh, but uh, uh, that didn't happen because uh, of, of NATO. Uh, and he says that, that was a contradiction to what uh, the goals that NATO itself had established. This is long. I'll just uh, 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 hit the high points. The, uh, the, this uh, first paragraph refused to, uh, uh, refers to uh, the intention of the Soviets of Stalin to join NATO when it was first uh, uh, muted. Um, this uh, few sentences talks about how the whole action in Kosovo bypassed uh, uh, the UN and that uh, Russia uh, would have joined the United Nations, I'm sorry, would have joined NATO even uh, if there was uh, gonna be a political cooperation of, of equals. Um, so uh, uh, they uh, uh, thought, uh, they, their opinion was they were rejected because Russia would upset the balance, but actually he thought the balance would, would have been better. And that NATO locked the, the Russians out of the Yugoslavia resolution, the deli deliberation uh, uh, for, for NATO. Uh, 
and uh, he, he thinks NATO is involved in internal affairs of others and that they're actually breaking international law. So that gives you some context uh, to his early view of NATO when he was uh, first assuming uh, power. Um, so we're, we're almost to 2004, uh, but uh, in 2002, uh, uh, the Baltic states and uh, uh, Slovakia, the other half of Czechoslovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, they were all given the green light to start talking. So everybody knew it was going to happen, and it did in 2004. Um, so this is the second advance um, of NATO uh, to the, the, the Soviet uh, borders. Um, but uh, uh, this is where we're going to end. Uh, he, he, it, apparently, it wasn't a total deal breaker. And when 9-11 uh, uh, came, uh, he forgot about uh, Kosovo and got on a plane and came to New York uh, in November uh, with his wife um, and, and toured uh, uh, the United States. And when uh, America invaded Afghanistan with, uh, uh, in, in cooperation with NATO, that was excusable because <clears throat> even though it was in the sphere of influence that they that Russia had for themselves in 1979, uh, they lost and they lost to the Mujahideen. And it was the Mujahideen who had caused 9-11. Uh, so uh, he wasn't gonna object to NATO in Afghanistan because of the common enemy uh, of the Mujahideen, <clears throat> uh, specifically bin Laden. So uh, th that's a good place. Uh, to stop, uh, just mention uh, the, the really big thing in to, at the end of uh, 2003 is when we invaded uh, Iraq. And um, uh, to be honest, I, I agreed with Putin on this one. I thought this was, that was a terrible mistake. And those of us that thought it was setting a bad precedent, uh, here, here we are, here we are. And, and, and uh, I, I think of all the factors that have influenced and th this is uh, just as big as, as any of them. Okay, I got to stop. Um, uh, I've run uh, over. Uh, I'll ask if there's any questions. Are the people of Kazan, they're Tartars, right? Yeah. Um, I went to, or I zoomed into a lecture by a UCLA professor last Friday, and he said that uh, Catherine the Great felt that there should be a buffer between Russia and its other countries, and that uh, Putin agrees the same. And when the Ukraine decided that they might be interested in NATO, this is what motivated Putin to go into Ukraine. Do you agree with that? Well, we're going to see when, when we get, it doesn't really come up. It doesn't uh, 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 come up uh, Ukraine until after Georgia. So uh, we're going to see next week that uh, uh, Putin goes into Georgia in 2008. And Bush, in response, um, uh, uh, invites uh, uh, Ukraine in, in, into NATO. And, and so uh, you, you, we're, we're in this downward spiral, uh, action, reaction, action, reaction. Uh, and, and that's, that's uh, certainly part of it, but it doesn't come until later. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, at the beginning of next week, it'll be 2004, and we're gonna see uh, the color revolutions, the orange revolution in the Ukraine, and the Rose Revolution in uh, Georgia uh, at the same time. And Putin's gonna uh, take military action uh, in, in Georgia in 2008. Uh, he he uh, does a lot of political uh, uh, chicanery in the, the Ukraine. That includes poisoning, by the way. Uh, which we'll see next week. How, how, how's that for a cliffhanger? And also the LA Times said that uh, Finland and Sweden are thinking of joining NATO. So I wonder how that's going to work. 
Well, this is the, the, this is the irony, right? Uh, 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 Putin was uh, trying to separate the uh, uh, the Ukraine and all he, and and weaken NATO, and all he's done is unified everybody. <laughs> um, if I could ask a question of you, John, going back in history a bit, um, and it's to do with the uh, change, the alternative of. NATO entry for those, so many of these countries that instead they should possibly have taken a neutral position. There was a great American diplomat, George Kennan. I'm sure you know him. How much do you agree with him that, in fact, it was a mistake back in the 1940s to establish West Germany rather than seek a united Germany with Stalin and, and have the united Germany as a neutral state, along with Austria, Switzerland, Sweden, Finland. Well, uh, uh, Austria is, is the, the key example. Um, as we said earlier, it was 1955. And uh, uh, Khrushchev, uh, in, uh, a year after giving uh, Crimea uh, to the Ukraine uh, administrators and taking it away from Russia, by the way, a year after that, he, he, he says, hey, how about we all pull out? There were four sectors uh, right, right up to 1955, just like there were in, in Germany when I was there. Um, uh, and he, he, he said, uh, what if we all go home uh, and Austria becomes neutral? And uh, I cried, er I cried early when we were talking about this. We talked about the uh, Austrian off-ramp uh, but but things have gone much further now. I don't think there's going to be an Austrian off ramp. The, Russia has been way way too ruthless. The argument against Kennan was, um, hey, do you really expect the countries uh, to? Um, uh, do you really expect these countries to not seek uh, protection? after being on, under the, the Russian thumb uh, for centuries. Um, you'll remember that Poland was uh, uh, dismembered, uh, not once, but twice uh, by, by, by Russia. You could argue in little bits uh, up to four or five times, but the big one was uh, 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 with, with uh, Frederick, the, uh, Frederick the Great and, and Catherine and, uh, Maria Theresa, um, uh, but do, do you really expect these these countries who finally got uh, had independence in the interwar years for the first time in a long time between World War One and World War Two, uh, they were out from under uh, the thumb of Russia, and they'd had they got that taste of independence that they had. Uh, uh, lost for a couple of centuries, do you really expect that they would not want to and would not lobby hard to uh, uh, get uh, an alliance? So uh, would it have worked out better? Would, would we all be living in a peaceful uh, Austrian off-ramp if uh, we had listened to Kennan? Could be, but uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't just um, uh, American aggression and perfidity. It was the, des the desire of the local uh, people for some kind of security. Thanks, John. Okay, other questions? So uh, uh, next week, we're going to meet on Monday afternoon, right? 2.30. 2.30 Monday afternoon next week. Uh, Bob, we're, we're, we're in, in, in uh, transition here between Tuesday at noon, which uh, didn't seem to uh, be working anymore. And we selected the one time that everybody uh, could do was uh, uh, Tuesday afternoon. Um, uh, I think people would rather do it sooner than 2.30. So we were uh, shooting for two uh, one thirty, um, but uh, gosh, if you could join us, it would be great. Um, I'll do my best, John. Thank you. So that uh, that would be starting in May. 
Uh, I, I still have clinic on Tuesday afternoon for, for a few more uh, weeks. And um, uh, Barbara uh, uh, has some babysitting duties in, until May. So this will, uh, we're, we're going to be kind of rotating around. Next week on Monday afternoon, we'll decide what we'll do the last week of April, and then we'll move after, after that to uh, uh, Tuesday. If, if you don't see me, John, I'm, I'm babysitting Monday afternoon too, Monday and Tuesday. But just, okay. yeah, so. Wait, I'm gonna interrupt you, Barb. You might wanna stop the recording. Oh. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's the thing, uh, uh, Bob, I need a lot of help. <laughs>